Good morning. Welcome to the Church 360 Unite Setting Up Your Website webinar. I'm going to be your host today, and my name is Jordan Bogart. I'm a software support technician here at Concordia Technology Solutions, and actually I believe it is going to be tomorrow I've been here for seven years. I've been here for a while, pretty familiar with all our products, and so that's why I'm hosting today's webinar. I want to I'll let you guys know about Church 360 Unite, and I really appreciate the opportunity to serve our churches out there. So this is uh, really a great opportunity for me as well. Um, so again, here's my contact information if you'd like to get in touch with me. Um, you, lots of different ways you can get in touch with us here in support, but this is my information if you'd like to speak with me specifically. Uh, I do want to note that all phones and microphones have been muted for today's session. So if you have any questions, there is that questions window. This is where you can ask any questions you guys might have about what we're covering today. Uh, just ask those questions as they come to mind. No need to wait till the end. Uh, we'll get those questions answered for you. And I say we because also joining me today here is my manager, Rod Kyles. He is the manager of Concordia Technology Solutions uh, Support Department. So uh, he'll be helping me answer some questions today as well. Uh, if you'd like to get a hold of Rod, here's his contact information as well. So what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to be talking about getting started here with Church 360 Unite, the sort of the initial setup of, this, of uh, the website itself. So lots of things we can talk about. But I'm going to go ahead and give us just a brief overview of the structure of this class first. So, you know, just running through our class agenda right now. So, of course, what I'm doing right now is giving you the overview. We're going to go ahead and then jump into our discussion about the different topics we'll be covering today. And I'll get into that in just a second. There will be a brief five-minute inter intermission. This is great to get up, stretch, get a glass of water, whatever you need. Uh, so it'll be about five minutes, about midway through this uh, webinar today. And then we're going to hop back into our discussion of Church 360 Unite. The will, there will be a brief quiz. No pressure on this quiz. You're not being graded or anything like that. This is just kind of seeing, hey, did what I say stick with you? And then finally, we will have a Q&A session here at the end of today's webinar. Um, and also, I do want to mention just one more time, we are going to be uh, providing you guys with a recording of the webinar uh, shortly after it's been completed, within about a few days. It takes just a day or two to get everything processed after the fact. So within about a day or two, we'll get you a recording of the webinar. All right, so what are we going to be talking about today? Well, first off, we're going to be talking about how you would sign up for Church 360 Unite, kind of the different plans that we have on offer, and the way you would log in. Okay. After that, we're going to talk about the settings menu, and there's a lot to cover in the settings menu. Uh, different items. Some we'll be talking about in depth today. Some we're going to be saving for future sessions. Uh, but we're going to be looking into the settings menu after that. So then we're going to talk about themes, and themes is a it's very deep. There's a lot you can go into and talk about themes. Um, so we're going to cover that here as well today. We're going to look at styles. Styles are kind of how your fonts look in Church 360 Unite. That's another big aspect of your theme. So we're going to look at that as well. We're going to talk about some customizations you can make to your theme. Um, and then we're also going to be talking about a few advanced options as well. And this is going to be just kind of a small sampling of some of those advanced options. Uh, okay, and then we're going to have our quiz and then our Q&A session. So, Got a lot of ground to cover here in today's class, so let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead here, and actually the net, what I'm going to pull up here next is I, before this class started today, set up a trial site here. Well, set, put in a request to receive a trial for Church 360 Unite. I'm going to go ahead and show us building the site from the ground up. Now, before I even do that, though, um, what I want to show us here, pull this up, is the Church 360 Unite uh, page here. Let me pull that up. So this is our Church 360 Unite kind of uh, page, kind of explaining what Church 360 Unite is all about. Uh, you can get to this site really the quickest way is just typing in 360unite.com. And this is going to be where you can actually go ahead, sign up for a free trial if you don't already have one. 
uh, or, or you don't already have a site. Uh, this is also where you can, like I said, you can get a little bit of uh, information just on all the different things that Church 360 Unite can do. Now, it's not going to go into detail here, but this is just kind of a, what can this do? Now, for sign up for a free trial, you click on the Start Free Trial window here, and this is where you're going to fill in your information about, uh, you, about you, your church, and kind of what you're looking to do with Church 360 Unite. One key part I want to point out here, though, is the subdomain section, because that's kind of critical in how you would get to your Church 360 Unite website. You see how it says your website will be available at mychurch.360unite.com. Now, sometimes there's a little bit of confusion about how to get to, some, get to your own Church 360 Unite site. So if I were to type in, like, uh, uh, Hope Community Church, you'll notice that my church changed. And how you would get to your Church 360 Unite website would be hopecommunitychurch.360unite.com. That's how you would get there. Um, and so it, it, the subdomain, I, we, get, we, say, we get some questions about that. Like, what is my subdomain? How do I get to my Church 360 Unite website? Well, this is going to be how you would do that. You can get to there by putting in whatever you entered for your subdomain, .360unite.com. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out, you know, this is a free trial, but we also do offer a free version of Church 360 Unite. Now, it doesn't have all the, all the options and the, of the, uh, the paid plans for Church 360 Unite. Mostly, it's just the basic kind of pages and navigation. It doesn't have, like, the members directory. It doesn't quite have uh, you know, all the options like being able to email out and things like that. So you don't quite get everything with the free version. But if this is, you know, if, if you know, you, you need, you know, your church can't quite afford to purchase a web page, but you still need the church web page, this is a great option for you guys if you would need it. Um, and, you know, even if you have Church 360, if you want to come in here and kind of try a few things out, the free page is another great option for that. Um, now, again, you might not have all the tools that you have on your paid plan, but uh, you're going to have a lot of options. Now, one thing I do want to mention, if you do have a Church 360 Unite website and you're trying things on your free site, we can't just transfer things in total from your free site to your paid site. Uh, so you can't quite do that. But this is a good way to try a few things out if you're interested in that. Um, so, you know, a lot of good, good options here. But let's go back here. As I mentioned here, I, was set, I had set up a trial before we started today. So let's go through the process of setting up a website. And so maybe your trial is just going to be like setting up your uh, paid version of your site too. So you would go ahead and click on set up your site now here in the email that you receive. And this is going to open up where you would go ahead and start setting up your Church 360 Unite account. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go through and just confirm my information. You know, my name is Jordan Bogart. Here's my email and I'll set up my password really quick. So let me just do that. Okay. And so I put in my password information and then I'm going to go ahead and fill in my church information. So we'll just go ahead and put in my email again for the church email in this case. And you know, 555-555-5555. And the address, we live at one two, we're at 1234 Test Street in St. Louis, Missouri, 63118. Okay, so that's our church address here. So I'm going to click continue. And then we come to our first choice. Now with this, this is kind of choosing the initial layout of Church 360 Unite and basically how your pages are laid out. I don't want you guys to stress out too much about this because really when we talk about the layout of the site, everything is flexible. Everything is kind of, you can reorder things in the way you want. This is just kind of a template to get started. So it's by no means anything you're locked into once you pick. Now, you can't go back to this screen and pick like a different option here. Like let's say you started with member focused and really you want to do mission focused, for example. You can't quite go back and uh, pick the other template, but you can always recreate what these templates do 
very easily. And we're going to talk more about that during tomorrow's session when we talk about putting content on the pages. Uh, but just know that this is just kind of an initial layout, kind of a site map, kind of how you have things organized. So I'm going to start off with choosing the visitor-focused uh, site here. So I'm going to choose that and click Continue. And it's telling us our site's being prepared. And okay, and just after a moment here, we are going to see our site. Now, the first thing it's going to have you do once you're on your site is it's going to have you select a theme. Now, again, don't stress out too much about this. We can always select another theme later. Um, and we're going to look at how we select our themes here just a little bit later today. So, um, you know, don't stress out too much about this. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my theme that I'd like to use. I like to use this wonderful cross theme. I'm a big fan of this theme. Lots of, it's a really, I think, very nice looking theme. A lot of good options here. Um, and you can, like I said, you can see the 12 different options here for themes. So let's click finish here. And here we are. We're at our home page for our Church 360 Unite website. So I named, my, I took the subdomain here. I just called it generically webinar 2021 because, hey, we're doing the webinar here today. So. This is the name of the trial site I picked. So if I ever wanted to get back to this site, how I would do that is I would go to webinar2021.360unite.com. And if I go to that site, here I am. Now, I've went ahead and, you know, we have the site set up, but right now I'm signed in. Okay, well, now the question is, well, what if I'm signed out? What if I am signed out? How do I get signed back in? Now, I'm going to click sign out here first off. It's going to sign us out of the site. Now you notice when I'm signed out of the site as well, I don't quite have all the same options along the top here. Now, again, we'll dig more into that tomorrow in our uh, session about you know adding content to pages. Uh, you can designate certain pages as being visible or invisible to people who are signed in or not. Uh, but if I want to sign in here, I'm going to come up here to the top right corner and click the little person icon. And different themes maybe have this laid out slightly differently. The wonderful crossing, I click the little per a person icon here and click sign in. And then I get the opportunity to sign in here. So I would put in my email address and the password that I set. Now, if I've forgotten my password um, or you you know we have somebody at your church who's forgotten their password to sign into Church 360 Unite. It's very easy to reset your password. All you'll need to do is at this sign-in screen, click "Forgot Your Password," and then you'll fill in your email address that you're going to go ahead and send uh, your pat. Basically, you're going to send a password reset request. And when you send that password reset request in, like I said, you fill in your email and click the send me password, uh, reset password instructions. What will happen then is you'll get a link in your email that you'll follow. And when you follow that link, that will let you set a new password. So this is something that can be done by anyone. Anyone who has a sign in to Church 360 Unite, they can reset their own password. So... Um, you know, once you get to the point where you start having more users, and we'll, that's going to be, we're going to be talking about that during, during Thursday's session uh, about adding additional users, uh, you know, they don't need to contact the administrator of the site to reset their password. They just need to come to this Forgot Your Password link, fill in their email, and then they'll get an email on how they can reset their password. So I'm going to go back to the sign-in page for now. I'm just going to go ahead and fill in my email address and put in my password. And if I check this remember me, that means my web browser is going to remember that I've signed in. Um, and I'm not, and, and it's, you know, when I come back to the site, it's not gonna have me sign in again. So this is specific to your web browser, not the website. So if you were to try to open up Church 360 Unite on another computer, it's, you're still gonna have to sign in again. This is only specific to the computer that you're on, to the web browser that you're on. So we'll click sign in here, and I am signed back into Church 360 Unite. Okay. Now, you know, another thing we can talk about here 
is we can click on this little edit page. Now we're not going to dig too deep into this again today, but this is where you could make changes to different pages that you're on. Now, again, we're going to get more into that in tomorrow's training session, all the different ways you can change your page. But I just want to point that out now so kind of the ideas in your head for the upcoming sessions. Okay. So the let's go ahead and dive into our settings menu here first. So I'm going to click on settings. And this is going to bring up our settings menu. Now I want to start here in the account sub tab. There's different sub tabs of the settings menu, but we're going to start here in the account section. I want to start up here with the usage section up here on top. So what this usage represents is the amount of data you've used on your site out of the available amount of storage that you have. Now I'm on a trial account right now, so that offers 500 megabytes of storage. And just with, kind of with some default images and things that we have here on the site, we've used 4.41 megabytes out of 500 megabytes. So we still have plenty of space left to work with here. Now, different plans for Church 360 Unite have different um, amounts of storage. I want to go back here to our Church 360 Unite page. Let me go ahead and pull that up here. And you can see we have different plans that offer different amounts of storage. Uh, if you go here, you can see I'm using a free trial right now, so that gives me 500 megabytes of storage. Now, when you go up to the standard edition, you get two gigabytes worth of storage. So that's about four times as much storage when you get to the standard edition. Now, if you go up to the advanced edition, that's going to give you 10 gigabytes of storage. So that's five times as much as the standard edition. And then finally, you have the premium edition, which offers you unlimited storage. You can upload as much as you want uh, when it comes to images, video, audio, any other files you upload to your Church 360 Unite website, um, you know, are gonna, you know, it's going to be covered here under that premium plan. Now, again, two, even two gigabytes is plenty of space to work with for most websites you would run, or run, run across. And there's other benefits to having these different levels of plans as well. But this is just one of the differences you have in the different plans of Church 360 Unite. So, um, again, kind of going back to usage, anything that you upload to the site, so any video, audio, images, files, they're going to be, they're going to go ahead and use up some of that storage. Now, you'd be able to remove items after you've been upload, after they've been uploaded to get some of that storage back. Another thing I do want to mention is the maximum file size of any one item you could upload is 100 megabytes. So you can't, uh, so you can't upload really big files. Uh, you can, so the biggest thing you can upload would be 100 megabytes. And we'll talk more about that during tomorrow's training session as well. Okay, so that's talking about the usage section. Next, let's talk about the church information section. And this is pretty basic stuff. So let's go ahead and just look at each of these items. First up, you have your church name. So where is this actually, where is this information actually relevant? Where is this going to show up? Well, the church information, the name section here, this is actually what's going to show up in your banner. Now, not every theme actually has your church name right here in this banner image. Um, but if your, if your theme that you're using does have this, this is how it's determining this. So uh, maybe we're actually faith, community, church, and school. Okay, and if I save that, now you can see it would say faith, community, church, and school. So you have. So this is how you can control what appears up here. It's based on your church name. Now you can't just erase what's in that church name to get rid of that. But I'm going to show you guys a trick a little bit later how you could get rid of this if you don't want it here on your site. But we'll look at that when we talk about some advanced options. Okay, next thing you're going to have here is your email address and email address, phone number, and address. Now, all three of these items, I'm kind of bundling them together because if you look at these, of course, this is talking about this is your email address, primary contact email for your church, your primary phone number for your church, and the address for your church. All these items are going to be down here in this get in touch section. So this is a good way. Uh, this is going to appear in the footer of your page. This is going to appear on 
every single page of your site at the very bottom. This is a good way people can get information about your church, and if they need to get in touch with you, this is where they're gonna. This is the information they're gonna be looking for, and you can see that all there. Okay, they can even click on this email to send an email directly to this link right away, or they can click on this to get jump over to Google Maps. So I can click on this, and it's going to give me this address, which it doesn't quite find an address for that because that's a fictional address, but you get the idea. Okay, so the last item up in the account section of the settings is our time zone. So the time zone, what that affects specifically is your events. And we're not, so that's still a little ways off and what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about the calendar and the events in our training on Thursday. But basically what you can keep in mind with this is when you plan an event and you set a specific time for it, let's say somebody is looking at your church website from outside your time zone. What's going to happen then if when you have this time zone set is the system is going to know how to relate that event to them and tell them, well, if I have an event starting at, you know, let's say 5 o'clock and I'm in the central time zone, but somebody's looking at my church website and they live in Florida in the eastern time zone, eastern time zone, it's going to say, well, that event that starts at 5 central time would actually be starting 6 Florida time. So it's just kind of telling us how to relate these events to people if they live in different time zones and kind of telling us what's the time zone for the church. Okay. All right, so that's our account setting, uh, account tab here. Let's move on to talk about calendars next. And we're not going to talk too much about this today. We're really going to be looking again more about this on Thursday's training. But you're going to see a listing of all the different calendars of events you have here in Church 360 Unite. The ones I have showing up here are default calendars. Uh, now, if you had Church 360 members, uh, on this same account, you would also see any calendars from Church 360 members as well. Um, so you'll see those there. Uh, these, you know, like I said, Church 360 Unite and Church 360 members are linked together. So if you have Church 360 members, information, including the calendars, is going to show up here in Church 360 Unite as well. So a lot of different options, again, you'll have here. But we're going to move on from calendars for right now. Next item I want to talk about are do is, is a domain. So as I mentioned earlier, you can get to your Church 360 Unite website by typing in your subdomain 360 unitecom just like you see up here. But, you know, maybe that's a little bit confusing for your visitors uh, to your site, you know, or how are they going to remember that, you know, 360unite.com, you know, 360unite.com part. It seems like a little bit extra. Well, that's why we offer domains. So a domain is basically a custom name for your church website. So, for example, you know, I have Webinar 2021, but my church name is actually, you know, Hope, uh, Faith Community uh, Church. Okay. Well, what if I wanted my dom What if I wanted my website to be faithcommunitychurch.com? Well. If that domain is available, because, you know, we're competing for domain names with everybody else who's using the Internet, if that domain name is available, you would be able to get that domain name. Now, domains aren't necessarily free, but with some plans of Church 360 Unite, we do offer a domain along with your subscription. So going back to our pricing page to look at the different plans, now, it doesn't come with the free trial or the standard edition. Now, if you have the standard edition, if you would like a domain, but you don't quite want to upgrade to the advanced edition, we do offer you the ability to purchase a domain at the price of $30 a year. And the big advantage to the you know, purchasing it through us is we manage it all for you. We get everything set up. We get it connected for you. Um, and so that's the big advantage to purchasing a domain through us. But you'll notice here with the advanced edition and the premium edition, a custom domain does come with Church 360 Unite. So after you get everything set, uh, after you purchase your, uh, you know, your Church 360 Unite plan, you'd be able to get in contact with us and support, and we would, and we, and we'd be able to discuss. Okay, what do we want as our domain? we'd be able to get that set up 
for you and uh, and you know purchase that domain and get it attached to your Church 360 Unite site. But you don't have to go through us for a custom domain either. Uh, if you already have a custom domain and you want to keep it with your current domain provider, that's fine. You'd be able to do that, but there's a few things you'll need to do. And there's a few, a little bit of information here. So again, you can see kind of what this domain is doing. As it said, this would allow your members to go to, for example, www.mychurch.com rather than webinar2021.360.com. And again, if you want to purchase a domain, you can get in touch with your sales representative. And here's the sales number where you'd be able to do that. But if you don't own a domain, you'd be able to purchase one with us. But if you do own a domain and with, it's with somebody else, you would be able to go in here to the host records, uh, the host settings at your current domain provider, provided you have access to it. You may need to reach out to your domain provider and provide them with these settings. But these are the host records you would set up on the domain. Okay, so you put that in here. Then, so and you want to make sure you put these in exactly as they're listed. Then what you'd want to do is down here, you'd want to put in your domain name. Now, don't get rid of this www. It does need that. So let's say you're, again, your domain name is going to be, uh, you know, again, going back here, it's Faith Community Church. Well, I'd come in here and I would type in faithcommunitychurch.com. Okay, so that's, that's my domain name that I'd want to use. So then if I click Save Changes, and everything's set up properly on that domain, then typically within about 24 hours, that would be set up. And, and people, instead of, when they want to go to your site, instead of having to go to webinar2021.360unite.com, they could go to faithcommunitychurch.com and get to this website. So you can, uh, so a custom domain kind of gives you that shortcut to your website under your own custom name. Another thing you can do with custom domains, and we offer this with the premium plan, is you can have custom emails. You can have emails with your church's custom domain. Now again, that's available along with the premium plan, but you can also purchase an email package separately, and you want to contact your salesperson to do that if you're interested in purchasing an email package. You would need to reach out to your salesperson, but you can get an email package with your, and that's going to include 10 different email addresses, all with your church's custom domain. So again, going back to this, we could have a domain that's, you know, we could have an email that says um, admin at faithcommunitychurch.com. So this would all be a way, again, you can kind of customize your online brand for your church, uh, for your church's website. Um, you'd have those custom emails, you'd have that custom domain. There's a lot of really great reasons to have a domain. So uh, if you want to have a domain and you don't already, reach out to us and we can certainly help you out. Okay, next item I want to mention, and I don't have a lot to say about this, but I do want to explain what it is, is going to be Google Analytics. So Google Analytics is a free tool that basically uh, is going to give you access to analytical information uh, about your church website. So for example, and as it mentions up here, you can see how many people are visiting your site for the first time. You can see what pages people are looking at. You can see where people are coming from. Um, you know, so this is going to give you uh, a lot, it's gonna some flexibility in understanding how people are using your church website and from that information, maybe you can tailor your church website to better serve those people. So if you're interested in Google Analytics, it is free from Google. You'd be able to sign up for this for absolutely free from Google. You can follow this link here, and you'll have this on your Church 360 Unite page too. You can click on this link, and this is where you can set up your Google Analytics account. After you set up your account, they're going to provide you with an account number. So you'll want to come in here then and check this Google Analytics box and then fill in your account number that Google provided you. What that's going to do once it's all set up is that's going to kind of be an indicator to Google, okay, this is the website we need to connect this Google Analytics account to. And then on the Google Analytics side, you would start getting information about your church's website. So 
And this is a really handy tool, again, for, uh, for your people at the church who are designing your site to understand what people are looking for and, again, kind of help better uh, design your site to really tailor to those people's needs. Okay. So the next item I want to look at here is the integration link. And again, I'm not going to talk about this too much today. We're going to save this one more for our Thursday training when we talk about um, bringing in users to Church 360 Unite. But this is, to, this is something you would use if you are a Shepherd staff user instead of Church 360 member. If you're a Shepherd staff user, you can still bring in your information from uh, your uh, Shepherd staff database to bring in your people. This is where you would set that all up. Now, I'm not gonna, we're not going to talk too much about that. To, we're only not going to talk much more about that today. But this is where we'll go ahead and set every. Well, this is where we can go ahead and start getting everything set up for that integration with your information from Shepherd staff. Okay. Next thing we're going to talk about here is social links. So what are social links? Well, you know. No, of course, you, you're going to have your church website, and you again, you'll probably, you may have it through Church 360 Unite, but your church has a presence on the web on other sites as well, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Vimeo, for example. All those are different places where people can find information about your church at. Well, your church website kind of acts as a hub, but you kind of want to be able to reach out to these other, show people where they can, where else they can find your church as well. So that's why we have this social links feature. So you're going to see we have we have spots for five of the most five pretty popular uh, social media websites uh, for you know, you'd be able to have your church's uh, information out at. So if, for example, I'm going to go ahead and pull up some of our some of Concordia Technologies. Uh, different websites we have here. I realized I never turned off my webcam. I'm going to go ahead and do that now um, so it's less of a distraction. I do apologize for that. Um, but if you have, uh, you know, different social media websites, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in some that Concordia Technology uses. So, for example, here's our Facebook page and uh, have our Twitter page as well. Now, we don't have a Vimeo page. Uh, but I can go, I'm going to go ahead and just fill these in. So here's our Instagram. Uh, grab that really quick. And finally our YouTube page. So by filling these in, if I save my changes, now when I look at the bottom right-hand corner of my website, you might notice I have these different social media icons down here in the bottom right. So like, for example, if I were to click on the Facebook link, this would take me over to the Concordia Technology Solutions Facebook page. So this is a great way to direct people to your various social media websites uh, for your church. So you'd be able to go ahead and set up those different links there and that's going to direct people to your uh, to your different social media sites. Now the last item here in settings again we're not going to touch on too much today because again we'll be covering this on Thursday but this is where we can set up text messaging from Church 360 Unite um, and so not a lot to say about that again today but just kind of stay tuned for this one we're going to be like I said we're going to have uh, we're going to have some more information on that coming up here on Thursday about how we can set up text messaging. Okay, so we're coming up here, I think, on probably a good point to take a little bit of a break. I'm going to go ahead and turn on our timer here. We're going to go ahead and take a five-minute intermission. I'm going to set this up here. So we'll, we're going to go ahead and come back here in just about five minutes, and we will see you then. All right, talk with you soon.
So the next thing I'm going to talk about here is themes. Now when we talk about themes, themes are the overall look and feel of your site. You're going to see um, you know, kind of the imagery that's used, the color that's used, the fonts that are used. These are all, that's all going to be contributing uh, factors to your theme, kind of what makes up your theme. Now when we look at the theme screen here, you can see 12 different themes that we offer. And all of them kind of have elements to them that make them unique uh, here with, for your church that you'll be able to use. Now right now I'm, I have the wonderful cross theme selected. As you can see, there's a lot of options here. Now, if you ever, so what you can do is you'll go ahead and select the base theme that you want to use. Let's say we want to look at this modern theme here, for example. And then you can see it gives you a list of presets. And the presets are kind of the custom, a little bit of customization on that base theme. So you would, you know, different images are used, different colors, font choices are used. If you want to get a closer look and see what this theme looks like up close, if you click and hold your mouse on that preset, it's going to show you what that's going to look like. Now, if you don't actually get like these images here where it says like the Gospel of Mark, and that, that's not part of the theme. That's actually content on an example page. But you're going to see like, okay, I get like the stained glass background here and this font choice. Uh, so it gives you a couple different ways you can kind of see what uh, kind of different options you have for those different themes. So you would go ahead and you'd pick the, you know, the theme and the preset that you want to use. And if you click apply theme, you go back out here and I can close out of this themes window and you can do the same thing with settings by clicking this little X next to it. And it would change the look of your site. Now I have this kind of blue background here. You can see my Headers change just a little bit and have that font. So you can change between your themes. Now, you can change between your themes really as much as you want. There's no real restrictions on that. But something to be aware of is that theme changes all happen live. You're going to see them live. Uh, even somebody who's not signed into your site, if you're making changes to your theme, they're going to see it live too. So my recommendation is to... When you're kind of initially setting up your site and starting things up, I would pick a theme, and I wouldn't change it too often, really, if ever. Uh, now, I understand, you know, yeah, you might want to refresh the look at your site. There's different ways to do that, for sure. But you want to be, you want to be uh, thinking about when you're changing your themes, uh, you know, okay, that is going to change the overall look of your site. You want to try to be consistent. So... Just something, uh, you know, something to consider there. Now, another thing to mention about our themes is they are all set to be mobile responsive. What that means is they are designed to try to work as best as possible with mobile devices as well. So people are looking at it on a phone. People are, you know, looking at a tablet. Those different size screens can kind of change how your websites look. And we've set these themes up to hopefully work as best as, as well as possible with mobile devices. Another thing you might notice about these themes is down at the bottom, there is a little bit of a description kind of explaining what options are available within the theme. So uh, like if I go to Earth Tones here, you might notice it offers a background image sized in 1144 by 171 pixels. So you'd be able to upload a background image you'd like to use. Whereas, you know, the light theme, you can upload a custom logo. So not all themes have the same customization options. There's different options with, that are available in some themes that aren't available in others. So that's another consideration when you're thinking about your themes. You've got to think about what kind of uh, customizations do I want. And I'll show some examples here of some different customizations a little bit later on in our training. Uh, but again, I'm going to go back to my wonderful cross style. That's one I really like. So I'm going to choose that here, but I'm going to choose a different preset. Let's use, I like this one here. I'm going to go ahead and apply that to my theme. And again, you can see I'm back to this theme here. Okay. You might have also noticed these save as and delete buttons down here. Now we're going to dive into that in just a little bit later on in the training. But basically this say this delete option, you can't use this delete option on any of these default themes. Um, that's for any of these 
options that you would do a save as. You can do a save as to do a custom, kind of a custom spin on one of these default themes. Now there's advantages and disadvantages to doing that. And I'll get into that in just a little bit. It's, that's what these buttons down here at the bottom are for. And then of course, after you've selected a theme and preset that you want to use, you'd be able to click apply theme to again, apply those changes. Now, another big difference between some of these themes is there's kind of two main orientations on the theme. There's horizontal orientation and vertically oriented themes. Both of these themes, uh, you know, are, you can use them to create a church website, but there's a, there's a major difference between the two. So horizontal themes, basically, we're, the Wonderful Cross theme is a horizontal theme. Your navigation is laid across horizontally along the top of the page here. And you know, you'll notice that over some of these items, these are this is like I am new is a category. You have multiple pages under this category. Okay, so you can see all your navigations laid out across the top of the page. Now that's the majority of our themes. In fact, every theme except for minimal and vertical is a horizontal theme. Now that's what I want to go back to minimal and vertical here. These are the vertically aligned uh, oriented themes. Now, the big difference here, I'm going to switch to vertical for just a second. Let's go ahead and use that. You'll notice now my navigation is listed on the side of the screen. Now, one big difference about vertically oriented themes is they don't support categories. You notice a lot of my items are actually missing here because they are all under categories. And we'll talk about categories and pages here in tomorrow's uh, webinar. Um, but so if you're going to use a vertically oriented theme, just know that you won't be able to take advantage of the categories option. And for some churches, that's okay. If you only have a handful of pages that you want people to be able to see, a vertically oriented, oriented theme will work very well. Um, but if you have kind of a lot of different pages that people might you might want people to look at, it might be a good idea to go with the horizontal, uh, one of the horizontal themes. So again, horizontal theme is going to be everything but minimal and vertical, and then the vertical themes are in, in minimal and vertical specifically. Okay, so that is our browse section of themes. Let's go into styles here next. So styles control what your font looks like on the page. Now, basically styles are our solutions to now, previously, in, in previous iterations of Church 360 Unite, you would be able to change every aspect of your font as you were designing your page. Now, that sounds really great, but there are a few drawbacks to that, and I want to really point. I want to point that out. The main thing is consistency. The big problem with being able to change everything on the fly is consistency. So. You know, let's say you're on a page and, you know, okay, I want this font to be blue and I want it to be about this size. And, but then I want to go back to another font here and use that for a while. But then I want to use that same font that I used earlier that was blue and maybe a little bit bigger. But do I remember exactly the shade of blue I was using? And do I remember the exact size that it was? Well, this looks close and I'm going to put that in here. And so you can see the problem then. It, you wouldn't get quite consistent results. And that would be within the page, within other pages on your site. It would be between different users might have different ideas about exactly what a font should look like. So that's why we went with the styles, uh, the styles option instead. If you've ever heard of the concept of a style guide, really that's what this styles section is. A style guide basically is this is the way uh, or organizations, um, you know, whatever they're they're putting out, whether it be web pages or uh, you know anything they might put out. This is how basically this organization does it. So we're kind of giving your church the opportunity to create a style guide for your website using styles. Now. That's a lot to just talk about to the general idea of styles. Let's talk about some specifics. So styles are really broken up into two sections. You have block styles and inline styles. A block, block styles are basically paragraphs. When you set a block style, it's used within the entire paragraph you're working within. So really, as you can see, these are good for headings. You're, you're going to kind of put you know this as a heading and it'll appear at the top here. 
The other style is inline styles. Inline styles are words. This allows you to change up the look of words within paragraphs. So this is what you're going to use when you're kind of creating body text throughout your site. Now, with themes, you can see we have, I mean, not themes, sorry, styles. You can see we have some set up for you already here within, the, within your theme whenever you set up the theme. Of course, you can also add new styles if you'd like as well, or edit existing ones. But let's start with adding a new one first. I'm going to click Add Style. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to name your style. So we'll call this uh, Example 1. We'll just call it Example here. Okay. The next thing you'll want to do is you're going to choose if you're creating a block style or an inline style. Now, I'm going to go with a block style here. Inline styles have a little bit fewer options because, again, they're kind of meant less to stand out. They're more to be body text within, uh, body text within your page. Block styles are kind of designed to stand out a little bit. So I'm going to switch to block styles. Inline styles offer, it, this has all the same options that inline has, plus a few more. So let's start off here with the font family section. So when we look at font family, I'm going to click here. This is the actual look of, this is the font, if you think about this like you're talking about in Microsoft Word, this is the actual font option itself. You're choosing what your font looks like. And we look at, um, you know, we look at all, we have a ton of different fonts available. We use what are called web fonts. Now, we use web fonts that are available, these are available free of use. Um, these aren't, you know, these aren't any fonts that, you know, are special you'd have to pay for. And these are available on the web for most users out there. So that's why we use these. But you can go through here and you can choose any of these fonts. So I like this PT Sans font, for example. So I could choose that here. Now, you might have noticed up at the top, there's this inherit option. Inherit is an option you're going to see in a few different areas. But basically, inherit means to take the default. But we'll use whatever the default font is for the site um, whenever you use an inherit option. So I'm going to go ahead, but and we're going to stick with this PT Sans here. So when I pick PT Sans now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my font style. Uh, this allows to kind of by default make this font bolded or italicized or bolded and italicized. But different font families offer different options here. So like if I were to use, you know, this Oleo script, you can see that there's not quite all the same options that that PT Sans offered because it's kind of a stylized font here. Uh, so I'm going to go back to PT Sans for right now though. So I'm going to use PT Sans. Uh, and then you can see font style. Let's maybe say it's going to be a bold. That's going to be bold because we're going to use it in a header. The next thing we're going to see here is the font size. And the font size is just that. It's the size of this font. So it uses this EM measuring unit. Basically the EM, this is, you know, one EM here. And this is just saying, okay, this is the standard measuring. This is, if this is the standard size, one EM, this is saying if we were to have maybe a 0.8 EM, this is what this would look like. Or if I had a 0.26 EM, it would look like this. And so you can see visually on this drop-down list, you can see just how big these different fonts are. So let's say this is going to be 1.75 EM, so it's going to get a little bigger. And you can see the preview text right here, too. The next thing you're going to have here is your text decoration. And this is going to, again, just by default, either be underlined or strike through. You can kind of pick what you're using there. Not too common that you would use those, but it is an option there as well. Next thing you're going to choose is your font color. So this is going to be exactly that, the color of your font. Now you can see this is a pretty sophisticated color picker here. There's a lot of tools here. Now, of course, you can just go through here and Maybe I want this text to be blue, so I'm going to change the color here, just a little, the hue just a little bit here, and I can click and drag to choose exactly what color I want this font. But there's other ways you can do this too. You can fill in the RGB values here, so stand for red, green, and blue. You could fill in the HSB values, which stands for hue, saturation, and brightness. Or if you know the exact hex code of the color you want, Hex code is a special code for every possible color you have out there is going to have its own special hex code out there. And there's 
tons of websites out there that can give you the hex code of any given color. Um, but you'd be able to fill that in here and you'd be able to get the color that you want. So lots of different options for picking your color of your font here. So we have that. Now, along with the background, uh, along with the color of the font, with headers, you can also apply a background color to the font too. So maybe I want my background color here. I want it to be this yellow. And you can see here then, okay, well then I want this shade of yellow. And it puts a background color behind that font. I'm going to go ahead and for right now just put that back to white though. All right, then you have margin and padding. And sometimes this is a little hard to keep straight on which is which. And so if I go ahead and I set my margins here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and where it shows margins. Margins is basically the space around the text border. So think about a box around your text. And the margin is how much space outside of the box there is between the, uh, between the box and the elements surrounding it. So if you were to like draw a box around this text, you would be able to go ahead and say this is how much space we're using. So maybe I want a 1M border, uh, kind of margin border on the top. And you can set a margin for the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. So maybe we'll go ahead and say we want a, you know, a half EM border on the top and a half EM border on the bottom with this text. Oh, sorry, not the bottom. That's the right. That's the left, rather. How about the bottom? There we go. So we want that on top and bottom. We're going to set this back to zero. So we're going to put that margin there. Now padding, padding is, is basically, if we think about that same box, this is the padding is the space between the text and its border. So think about, again, thinking about that box around the text, padding is the space between the border of that box and the text itself. So that's, again, kind of the way you can think about margin and padding. Okay, and so you can see here, we'll go ahead and set a 0.25 padding and a 0.25 padding here. So that's the difference between margins and padding. Okay. Finally, you have the ability to add a border to your text as well. So if you want to have a border on this, you'll go ahead and select the drop-down list. You'll select what type of border you want. So you can do like a solid border, a dotted border, dashed, or double border even. You can kind of choose what you want. And you can also choose the color, and you'll have that great color picker there again. And then you can just pick the thickness of that border. So let's say I want that to be a thickness of three. So when I do that, you can see it's going to go ahead and set that thickness on the border. Maybe I want it to be four. You can kind of see how this adjusts here as you type in what you want. So that would place a border around our text that we use. So that's how we would set up a style. So I'm going to go ahead and just save that. And now you can see I have this example style here. Now, when I created that style, you might have also noticed a gauge here on the right called font load. Font load is the uh, is basically how much uh, loading stress, quote unquote, it would kind of put on your site to have that uh, to have that font on your system. Whenever you load up a page, it's having to load up the different fonts that you have on the site. So kind of the more different unique styles you put on a page, it's going to kind of increase the font load on your page, which means it might take a little longer to load up your, your pages if you have a lot of unique fonts. Now, just having one font like this isn't going to, yeah, isn't going to completely, you know, break your loading, but if you create a bunch of different custom fonts, you're going to see this start to go way over into this area, and it might take a little longer for you to load up your pages. Okay, so that's something, something to consider here. Now, of course, you can click on a, a style to go ahead and edit that style. And there are a few options at the bottom. You can uh, delete a style if you want to get rid of it entirely. You can do a save as if you want to save a copy of the style and then edit it from that copy. Um, so you have a lot of different options you can work with. Now, if I were to actually use this style here, I'm going to just kind of briefly jump ahead to our adding content to pages. If I edit this and then I highlight this and I pick my uh, example uh, style here, you can see it creates that, it goes ahead and pulls up this style here. So that's how you would actually utilize these styles once they've been created. So again, there's a lot of different things you can do with styles. Um, you, know, you can really go on for quite a bit on styles, but I'm going to not save that for now. I'm going to go back to my themes. 
that's for now, that's our styles. All right, so next let's look at the customize section. So as I mentioned earlier, different themes offer different options for uh, offer uh, you know different customization op options here in Church 360 Unite. So right now we're looking at the wonderful cross theme and we're looking at the different options we have here. So you can see like there's a background color option and if I start making some changes to it, let's, uh, let's look at the footer color here actually, that's a better example. You can see I could change the footer color of my site right here. I can just kind of drag this around and get different footer colors. I could change the, you know, when I'm looking at the heading, I could change the default color of the heading. I could change the link color. There's even some images here I can upload here as well. So like if I want to change this banner image, for example, if I click browse here and I could upload an image. Let's say I want this uh, image of the church here. So I'm going to upload that, save my changes. And well, I put that <laughs> the logo there. Uh, so that put it in as a background image. There's a few tweaks we'd have to make here to get that to show up actually the way we want. I'm going to clear that out and let me try it here. Let me change that. Let me refresh my page here. Customize and well, I'm not sure what's going on with that, but I will check in on that here. I do apologize. But you can upload different images here to get different uh, things in your banner here. Um, now, I'm going to do a quick ask just of the audience here. Uh, you know, what themes are you guys using? Is there any customization options you guys would look at, like to look at on the themes that you guys are using? If you guys are using Unite already, just kind of a quick question of our, of our audience here today. What, what themes are you using? I'll kind of give you guys a moment in the question window to respond to that, if you know it. If you don't, that's okay, too. Modern, okay. So I heard modern. Any other themes? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to switch over to the modern theme. Let's take a look at some of the customization options there. I'm going to switch to modern really quick. Let's go ahead and use this theme. And I'm going to see, okay, it did change for us here. And, and I go to customize. Now, modern doesn't have too many options here, actually, um, in the customization section. Um, but, again, you can see there's a background image here you could change. So I'm going to switch to that. Oh, well, yeah, it doesn't seem to be working for us today. I'll check in with my team on that one here. But then there's also the accent color, and that's referring to, like, this color here on links. So you'd be able to change that here as well. It's also the color you see here on the social links as well. Okay, so that's, that's uh, different customization options. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and hop on over from the customization options to the advanced section. Now, the advanced section as it implies, is an advanced feature. Um, to give you kind of a brief idea about these different options, um, we're going to talk about this custom headers and sec uh, to be custom headers and script section. Now, this may go over your head a little bit if you're not familiar with kind of the coding of website building. But let's talk about these. So, custom headers get put in the head tag of each page. So these are usual styles. So basically what this is a lot of times is a CSS override. It's kind of overriding the default information of the theme to do something special. Custom scripts get placed right before the closing body tags. These are usually JavaScript that we're talking about. Um, so you might do a, a custom script for things like countdowns or a scrolling banner. So I have a few custom tweaks we can make with some of these custom, oh, some of these options here in advance. I'm going to show off a few of these today. Now, by no means is this an exhaustive um, list of different things you could do with this. And really, you can do a lot with this if you have the know-how. Um, that's kind of the trick to this. This does kind of rely on some image, uh, some knowledge you might have. So. Let's go ahead here and say, for example, you know, I'm using the I'm using the modern theme right now. Well, if I go to themes here, what if I wanted to customize the colors 
of these sign-in, these items here in the sign-in. Okay, well, what I could do here is I could go to themes and advanced, and I'm going to add this, st this style option here. So I'm going to add a style tag in. I'm going to go ahead and make a few tweaks here. I'm going to copy this from my text here, because otherwise it's take a while to type. But I added, some, so I have some styles here, and I'm changing some uh, some different items here. Okay, so I have the style tag, and I'm changing some items. So I'm going to save this. Now you can see, all right, well, I changed this color of this welcome icon, this welcome text here, for example. Now, again, I think this is tailored actually for a different theme this tweak. I do apologize about the confusion on that. Uh, but... This is looking here in the advanced section and saying, okay, well, the welcome message here, I wanted that to be green. All right, so I, I went ahead and I went in here and I designated that through this custom, uh, custom option here. Now, again, this is designated, I believe, for another theme, so some of the things it's referencing are in this particular theme. But, again, you have some different options here with how this could work. Okay, what's another thing we can do here? Well, another item we have here as a customization is one thing, you know, when we look at the calendar of our page is sometimes it'll truncate uh, different text when we're looking at events on our calendar. Um, and so this would allow, a, this next customization would kind of untruncate our calendar. This, this is going to be a custom style, so this is going to be a custom style here as well. I'm going to go ahead and just grab this here. I'm going to copy this, place this in my custom headers, and there's a lot that happens here. This is all a custom customization here. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and save this. And when I do, and you can see it's going to make a little bit of change up here. So it is going to kind of change things there. But if I go to calendar now, it is going to go ahead and and I don't have any events set up, so this is kind of a, not the best demonstration of this different custom tool, but you'd be able to kind of untruncate your calendar here. Okay. So you can see that, you know, some of these customized options, again, they're a little bit tricky in uh, kind of what you can do with this here. Um, let's see. One more item here I'm going to show off. So what if we wanted to change the background but just on one page? Well, this is where we could use a custom script. So this is something for the modern theme exclusively. Some of these, some of these options, as I mentioned briefly earlier, are kind of exclusive to one theme or another. So this one would work just on the modern theme. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this into my custom scripts. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and paste this in here. And then you can see here, this is the script, and the little comment here says we need the URL, the background image that we want to use. So I uploaded an image here earlier. Let me go ahead and actually go back and grab that, that URL. I'm going to do that just by pulling this image up. So brief preview into tomorrow's training here. Well, here, let me upload that. So I'm going to grab that image and let's go back to themes and we're going to go into advanced here. Hold on. Open that in the new tab. And then I'm going to go to advanced here. I'm going to get rid of this here for right now. And I'm going to copy in my custom script here. And let me get rid, let me go ahead and fill in the URL of the page, of the, the image I want to use. And then I'm going to go ahead and also, my site here. Grab my home page URL. 
put that up here. This is the page I want to apply this image to. Slash home. And when I save this, you can see now it did a couple of things. One, it changed the background color of this frame. It also applied an image, a background image, but just to this page. So it has, you know, on the other pages we have the same image, but this one's actually applied a custom image to it. So again, a lot of really cool things we can do with these advanced options. Okay, we're almost to the end here. But the last thing I want to talk about, and I kind of alluded to this earlier when we talked about um, themes, is about cloning your theme and what that gives us. So let's say I wanted to work from a copy of this modern theme. So there's a couple different ways I can do that. I can do the save as here, but then I can also go to this last option here, which is edit. This is going to create an exact copy of this theme, but with one key difference. I'm going to have access to the code of this theme. So if this is advanced, think of this like advanced plus, basically. I'm going to go ahead and clone my theme. We're going to call this modern one. And this is going to copy the theme. But the big difference is now if I go into edit, I have access to the exact code of this theme. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, this is kind of letting you dig in and get into exactly every little line of code within your theme and make customization. So this is only an option I would use if you really have a know-how of how websites are designed and how themes, how the themes kind of work, uh, different code works. So different items here in the resources section. You can see folders for assets, images. These are all different things that are used on your site. Okay, And then here we have individual files here like default.theme. This is, uh, you know, kind of the actual theme. Of, this is the coding for the theme of your site. But then you have the the CSS for your site, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It's a little bit different than HTML, which is the, the uh, kind of the text, the language of websites. Um, and so I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on this because, again, kind of one of the, this is, if, if you're understanding how this works, you're probably looking at this and saying, oh, I know what I'm doing here. Or if you're looking at this right now and going, I don't want to touch this with a 10-foot pole. I totally understand either way. Now, one thing I do want to mention about themes, about cloning your theme, the big drawback to this is that if you clone your theme, updates we make to themes as our development team as a whole, and they, they make updates to themes, we don't roll out updates to themes that have been cloned. Now, the reason we do that is because we don't know what you've done necessarily, necessarily if you've cloned your theme, and we don't know if the update that we would release would be compatible with your customized theme. So we do that in order to not mess up what you have here already. And that's another thing I do want to mention about cloning your theme. If you come in here and you don't quite know what you're doing, it is possible to kind of break your, you know, I say in quotes, break your site, now we can always go back and get it, you know, kind of back out of the ditch for you, so to speak. Um, but again, I would really only recommend this if you have a really good handle on what you're doing here with the custom coding of your site. Um, otherwise, I would say you're probably good with all these other options here under under themes, and we can do a lot through this advanced option here too. Um, I can't promise we'll be able to do everything that you want, and we may not know the answer and support right away. But we can do a lot of things with this customized theme, you know, the, you know, the themes without having to clone your theme. Okay, so all that being said, that's what I have here for today's training session. So I'm going to go ahead to wrap up this to wrap up this session before we get to our quiz. I do want to point out down here in the bottom right, we do have this great little help widget here. If you have any questions at all. You can always type your question here to pull up different help articles. We have a lot of great content here. Uh, of course, you can also send us an email with your questions as well. Uh, when, like, so we can typically get, typically get those answered within about one business day. And you also have here your uh, our support number as well. Now, again, with the Help Center, 
if you actually want to dig into the Help Center itself, if you just go to 360unite.zendesk.com, we have our entire Help Center here. There's tons of great help articles here about different things in Church 360 Unite, more than I, more than I talked about today even. Um, so there's a lot of content out here to help you with Church 360 Unite. All right, so let's go ahead now. Let's go back and let's do our quiz here. So let's go ahead and take the start our quiz. Now you're going to see some questions pop up here, and you're going to go and you'll be able to answer those questions. So let's start off with our first question here, and this is a true or false question. To get to your Church 360 Unite webpage, go to www.360unite.com. Is that true or false? To get to your church's Church 360 Unite webpage, you would go to 360unite.com. So I'll give everybody a few moments to answer that question here. See if the answers are kind of starting to come in. I'll give everyone just a few more moments to get that answered. Okay. To get to your church's Church 360 Unite page, go to 360unite.com. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close out the poll here. It looks like the majority said that, that is false, and that is correct. It is false. Every church's Church 360 Unite website address is unique. To get to your church's Church 360 Unite site, you'll need to know your church's subdomain, and then you would go to subdomain.360unite.com. So I use that webinar 2021 uh, page, so I would go to webinar2021.360unite.com to get to my church's webpage. Remember that you can also purchase the domain, and that's another way you can get to your church's website if that's been set up. All right, let's go on to our next question. Any images, video, audio, or other files that you've uploaded to your church's Church 360 Unite website will use some of your site's available storage. Is that true or false? Any images, video, audio, or other files that you've uploaded to your church's Church 360 Unite website will use some of your uh, uh, site's available storage. Okay, and I'm going to give everyone just a few more moments to get that question answered here. Okay. Looks like about half of us have answered. I'll give it just another few seconds. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close things out here. And again, with that, majority on this one said true, and that is correct. It is true. All assets that you upload to Church 360, your Church 360 Unite website do count against how much storage you have on your site. Different subscription levels offer different amounts of storage. So Remember that, you know, on a trial site, yeah, we have 500 megabytes, but that goes all the way up to unlimited if you're on a premium plan. So different, you have different options for how much storage you have. And again, typically most of the, you know, uh, for a, even a standard plan, you get two gigabytes, which is plenty of space to work with. And you will be able to manage kind of your assets that you have and get rid of stuff that you're not using to kind of get some of that storage back. We'll talk about more in tomorrow's training. Okay, true or false on this, on this one here. All themes offer the same customization options. All themes offer the same customization options. Is that true or false? So give everybody just a minute or two to get that answered here. All themes offer the same customization options. I'm going to go ahead and close that out now. Looks like most people answered who have been answering here. So let's go ahead and close that out. Okay, and that is false. Different themes offer different customization options as some themes, for example, will support a banner image while other themes will not. So again, kind of going back here and thinking about different themes, uh, you know, you want to kind of think about that as you're planning at your site. You want to think what customization options are important to my church what am, I, what am I going to need to build the website that I want, how I want it to look? Okay, so that's different themes. All right, another true or false question here. Font changes, such as changing the size or color of your fonts, can be made on the fly. Is that true or false? So font changes, such as changing the size or color of your fonts, can be made on the fly. Okay, let's see here. Seems we're kind of split right now. 
Give everyone just a little bit longer to get that answered. Okay. All right, we're a little bit more split on this one. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. So this one was split just about down the middle here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to look at this. And the answer to that is false. So and maybe this is a little confusing how I explained it when we did this, uh, did this uh, training here. But changes to your fonts happen within the styles menu, and styles allow you to set up different fonts for you to use throughout your site before you start designing your pages. This is done to give your site a consistent look. So, uh, and again, because I didn't really show today how to add content to pages, when I say on the fly, what I mean is when you're like putting content onto a page, I can't go. You can't just go in and adjust the size of a style that you're a font that you're using just on a scale. You'd be able to pick a different style but you wouldn't be able to go ahead and actually adjust the size of that font directly or the color of that font directly. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about uh, uh, changing your font on the fly. Okay, one last question here. If you clone your theme, you will not have access to any future theme updates to Church 360 Unite. Is that true or false? you clone your theme, you will not have access to any future theme updates to Church 360 Unite. So I'm going to give everybody some access, some, uh, sorry, access. I'm going to give everybody some, a little bit of time to answer that question as well. So, let's get a little bit of time here. If you clone your theme, you will not have access to any future theme updates to Church 360 Unite. So just another few seconds to answer. Okay. I'll go ahead and close things out here. And again, this is a kind of a split uh, split uh, answer here, uh, but that is actually true. When you clone your theme, it gives you a lot of flexibility in designing your site. You have access to that whole edit menu I just showed just a few minutes ago. But the drawback to that is because of that flexibility, we can't guarantee compatibility with theme updates that we release in the future. Because of this, future updates will not be applied with clone themes. Basically, we don't want to screw up the work that you've done. If you put in work to really go in and edit the code of your theme, um, we just don't want to break that for you. So that's why we may, that's that's why we don't try to apply any theme updates to uh, any to uh, any uh, cloned themes. Then, because you guys have kind of put in the work, we don't want to mess that up for you. So that's going to go ahead and wrap up our quiz for today. Uh, now, do you guys have any questions? I haven't seen a whole lot of questions come in during this webinar, but I want to make sure we answer any questions you might have about anything we covered here today. So if you have any questions, now's the time to ask those questions. So uh, I am going to move on to the next screen, but if you're typing out questions right now, don't worry. Keep typing. Definitely have time to answer those, but I'm going to go on to the next screen. I want to thank everybody for t attending today's Church 360 Unite webinar. Um, I really hope, above all else, that you guys learned something new, uh, that you maybe had some questions answered, that you guys uh, just learned a little bit more about Church 360 Unite, and maybe had your eyes open to some of the possibilities that you have with your church website. Um, again, I really, again, want to thank everybody for attending today so much. If you have any questions, you know, of course I showed my contact information at the start of the session today, but the best way to get a hold of our, our team for any questions you might have is to give us a call at our support line here at 1-800-346-6120. You can also send your questions to support at cts.cph.org. That's our support inbox. Again, we get those uh, questions. We get those uh, questions in our support inbox here. Let me get back to you within about uh, one business day again on that. Okay, I do see one question coming in here. How do I know what theme I'm using? Well, Janet, let's take a look at that here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm back here at my site. If I'm logged in here, and I'm logged in as an administrator, when I'm logged in as an administrator, I have all the options up, up here on top. But if I click themes. And I look at themes here. Um, it's kind of difficult to see, but you can see how there's like this little arrow pointing up when I have this theme clicked on here. And there's a light blue background behind this. But I can tell I'm using the modern theme right now because of that. You can see that little arrow, that little arrow is pointing up to the modern theme. We have that highlighted in blue. So I'm using the modern theme. And I can tell that right now because of that. Okay. 
Any other questions today? Any other questions? I'm going to give everyone just a minute or two more. And if you don't have any other questions, uh, this yeah, so this is the end of the webinar, so feel free to head on out now. I know it's just about lunchtime for a lot of people, so if you're looking forward to lunch. I hope you enjoy lunch. And uh, we'll, let's see here. Don't see anything else coming in, so I think I'm going to go ahead and close things out. If you guys have any questions at all, though, you didn't quite get them typed out, or if you just don't uh, just didn't quite fit uh, what, what we're talking about today give us a call or send us an email and we will be happy to help you guys out again it's been a pleasure speaking with you all today and you guys have a wonderful day take care and stay safe bye bye